Um, <clears throat> good morning. Uh, I'm going to, as uh, against the, the chair said, I'm going to present on both the school education system as well as the higher education system. Uh, at the outset, I would like to apologize on behalf of my president who was supposed to be here, but because of his prior engagement, he could not make to uh, this meeting. So I would be presenting on behalf of him as well, right? Uh, all right, at the outset, I would like to mention that the modern education, the history of modern education system in the country is very new. Uh, so that's why in education in Bhutan was mainly monastic uh, until 1950s. Of course, uh, if you look at the first modern school was opened in 1914 in Ha, uh, and then there were 46 uh, students enrolled, and then the, the, the subjects that were learned was Hindi, English, Arithmetic, and, Zong, and Zongkha. Zongkha is the national language of the country. Um, after that, now, if you look at the education system, we have brought the three elements of the education system, the general education, monastic education, and the, uh, the non-formal education. You know? Now, if you look at the non-formal education, it's a little different uh, from the other areas, like it's focused on the, 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 the children as well as the adults who had not been able to uh, get opportunities to study. Now, general, now, if you look at general education is by far the biggest and is now common seen as the, the formal education structure. Okay. And then the current formal education system has expanded since the first five year plans. I think the development of the modern education system in its full blown stage started after 1961. That was when the first five year plan started in the country with, of course, assistance from Indian government. Okay. And then uh, prior to 11 schools in 1961, now we have about 880 schools and other ed educational institutions in the country. This is based on the ed annual education statistics of the Ministry of Education. Uh, uh, briefly, to look at uh, the uh, structure of the education system, if you look at school education system, school-based education in Bhutan comprises of 11 years of um, free basic education. If you look at Education is totally free in the country. And then uh, free basic education from classes PP till 10. That's a basic education. And then it's a primary education is for seven years. That is PP to class six. Then you have, which uh, starts at the age of six. Of course, now there is some leeway about a f a five to six months. Uh, and then seven, um, uh, for seven years, while secondary education, that is class seven to ten, is for four years. There is a national board examinations, okay, Bhutan certificate for secondary education, BAC, at the end of class ten. Now, if you look at this, was introduced somewhere in 2005. Prior to that, we were following Indian curriculum, and then it was the ICAC based. Uh, uh, and uh, we, the exams, the question papers, all were based on the ICAC programs. After class 10, students either continue their education in higher secondary schools, enroll in the technical training institutes, uh, or they enter the labor market. Uh, then students who do not qualify for public higher secondary schools, they have the option to continue their studies in private higher secondary schools, or enroll in the vocational courses that is offered by public and private training institutes. And then there are 10 uh, uh, technical and vo vocational education training institutes in the country as of 2017. Uh, after completing class 12, you know, some students continue their studies at the tertiary institutes within the country. You can just take this country for a diploma or bachelor's uh, degree, or they enter the job market. Is it working? Yes, sir. Point is no, this one. Point okay, okay, okay. And then those who do not qualify for public tertiary education institutes, um, they attend private tertiary education institutes in the country as well as outside. And then I think there are a large number of students who come to India to study. Doesn't work. <laughs> it's okay. No, no, it's okay. Just you can forward. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I can use this. All right. Now, if you if you look at the uh, school education system, 
I think there has been a major reform. As I said, in the past, we were following the Indian curriculum, and then I have been the product of that, you know. And then after, I think, uh, somewhere in 1990s, then they started nationalization of the curriculum. And then the, in 2016, there was a major shift in, in the curriculum after the National Education Curr Curriculum uh, uh, Conference, where, you know, initially the curriculum, there was no curriculum framework. So after 2016 conference, then the, the, we have an organization called Royal Education Council, which is responsible for development of the curriculum, especially for the school curriculum. So after that, they have started developing now. They have, I think, a framework for almost all the subjects. And then based on the framework, the textbooks have been designed. And then there has been a major change in the curriculum for the school education system. Um, and then in terms of the governance, the school education system is looked after by the Ministry of Education, specifically the Department of School Education. Uh, there are about, um, there are 476 uh, public uh, schools and 36 private uh, schools. Now it's a little different from the situation here in India. I think here people prefer to enroll into the private schools, but in our case, I think it's people actually prefer to enroll into the government schools and only if they don't get the government schools, that's when people I mean, enroll their children in the private schools. So with this brief uh, uh, introduction into the school education system, maybe I would like to move to the higher education systems in Bhutan. Again, that's very new. Uh, prior to 2003, we did not even have a university. Uh, we had a college, uh, Sharapsi College, which was actually affiliated to University of Delhi. And then we had uh, the, the curriculum uh, adopted from Delhi University. The papers used to come from Delhi University. The answer scripts were, I mean, used to come to Delhi. The corrections were done in Delhi. And then, you know, that way, it used to take about three to four months to get the results. Can, uh, so after it started there, but then prior to that, there were other institutes, which was not really a higher education institute. For instance, the college where I'm working just now was established in 1968. Uh, this was uh, inaugurated by His Majesty the Third King on 29th May 1968. But this was introduced as TTI, Teacher Training Institutes. And then the basic aim of introducing this um, uh, institute was to train teachers who could teach in the primary schools. Because the, those days we did not have uh, national teachers and then we had all the experts mostly from India, West Bengal, and then mostly from Kerala. Uh, as of now, as I said, the first university, that is the Royal University of Bhutan, was established on 2nd June 2003, uh, based on the charter issued by His Majesty the Fourth King. And then the Royal University of Bhutan has 10 constituent colleges and two affiliated colleges. Um, this university um, has a, I mean, the colleges are spread across all the, across the country. It's kind of a federated colleges. It's not within the campus. And then the university became, it was under the ministry prior to 19, uh, sorry, 2011. In 2011, the university became autonomous. Then the second university, that is Geser Gebu University of Medical Sciences of Bhutan was established in 2015. And then they are responsible for this nursing and medical uh, studies. They have three faculty under uh, three faculty, the faculty of postgraduate medicine, faculty of public health and nursing, and then faculty of traditional medicine. Now governance, um, uh, governance, the tertiary education system is governed by the tertiary education policy 2010, TEP, uh, which was mandated, uh, which has mandated establishment of the Tertiary Education Board, that is TEB, and the Bhutan Accreditation Council BAC. Uh, TEB and BAC are empowered bodies uh, that take all major decisions pertaining to planning, establishment, funding, quality assurance, registration, and licensing. They also provide oversight, direction, oversight and direction to the Tertiary Education Institutes. And then besides these two uh, universities, Ten, um, two universities, there are other autonomous uh, tertiary education institutes like Royal Institute of Management, um, uh, Jimmy Singi Wangchu National School of Law, which are autonomous. 
Uh, maybe I think uh, as I come from the Royal University of Bhutan and then the Royal University of Bhutan is mainly responsible for providing higher education, I think it's important for me to highlight on the vision and the mission. Uh, the vision of Royal University of Bhutan is an internationally recognized university stepped in the GNH values. I think many of you know GNH, Gross National Happiness. That's the development philosophy, you know, which is four pillars. And then the mission uh, is to provide programs of study at tertiary education level of relevance and good quality, which will fulfill the needs of the country for an educated, skilled, and human population. And to promote and conduct research to contribute to creation of knowledge of relevance to Bhutan and to provide training and professional services for enhancement of knowledge, capacity building, and community development. Uh, and when you look at the structure, as of uh, 2018, there were 11,259 students pursuing various courses in tertiary education institutions within Bhutan. As I said, the, there are about there are two colleges that provides engineering and technical education. There are two colleges of education, and then uh, other others are responsible. I mean, others provide this arts and humanities programs. And then there are uh, there are two private in, private colleges that are affiliated to you. Know, they provide business as well as arts and humanities programs. Uh, female enrollment is slightly lower than the males making up 46% of the total enrollment at the tertiary level in Bhutan. But I think this, the scenario is changing. For instance, in the college where I work, if you look at the, the number of female students enrolled in the male, you know, it's now dominated by female. For instance, our class size is generally 35 to 40. So in that, usually you have about 10 to 15 boys and then more than 20 girls enrolled in. So I think the situation is changing. Uh, many, I mean, besides this, many students go outside the country to pursue higher education uh, on various scholarships and self-funding. And then, as I was mentioning in the beginning, large number of students study in India. Um, when you look at the the cross enrollment ratio in the country, it is 31.9% uh, for male and then 27.1% for female. But if you look at the gross enrollment ratio, including those people who are outside, then it's 41.6%. Um, maybe the admission into higher education system, as I said, as of uh, 2018, there were 887 students pursuing various undergraduate programs in different countries. Out of this, 418 of them were in India. Now, this is students who were enrolled outside the country on a scholarship. And then a significant number of students also study abroad through private funding. That's basically because the, the, the institutions, tertiary institutions in, in the country are not able to accommodate all the students you know, that uh, graduate uh, from class 12. Um, there are 4,628 uh, 4, students pursuing various degrees degree courses through private funding outside Bhutan as of 2018. Now, admission into the constituent colleges of RUB and KGUMBS, that is the Gesser Girbo University of Medical Sciences, is based on merit ranking. Um, and we don't have the entrance exam like uh, you have in other countries. Uh, it's based on the merit ranking. And then this merit ranking is based on the ability rating of each of the programs. There is ability rating based on the ability rating. We merit them, and then that's how the students. And then the admission into the constituent colleges of RUB is based on the ratio of 70% government funding and 30% self-funding. Uh, learning and teaching approaches, I think uh, it's not lecture-centered. Of course, lecture is one of uh, the te teaching and learning approaches. There are, we have the school teaching and tutorials. Uh, independent study is an important component. Okay? And then we also have the practical works. Place-based education has become very important, and we strictly follow that. We also have project-based learning. Uh, field work is uh, an important component, and then ICT supported learning. We make use of the virtual learning environment, and then the platform uses Moodle. I'm That's sorry, I'm going to have to I'll ask just take you to. One, one minute. Okay.
Uh, recent developments, as per the tertiary education policy of the Kingdom of Bhutan, the Bhutan Accreditation Council was constituted on 14 June 2011, and then the council accredited all constituent colleges of REV and few other institutions as of 2018. And then the use of technology in teaching and learning is uh, becoming prominent now. Uh, issues and challenges, maybe, I think it's expanding tertiary education enrollment. That's why you see a large number of students outside the country who are enrolled. And then promoting high quality research. You know, that's important because, uh, I, sorry, I forgot to mention, we have only programs at the undergraduate, I mean, undergraduate, and then we have few master's programs. Uh, we don't have a PhD program within the country. So therefore, people have to go outside to, for, to pursue PhD. And then the balance between quality assurance, innovation, and flexibility is one of the issues. And then the mismatch between graduate skills and re, uh, references and job market demands is one of the challenges that uh, we are facing as of now. This means thank you. Thank, thank you very much.